Hello and welcome to my first ever unboxing video. So I've pulled these three boxes out of my loft. Um, they've not really seen the light of day for perhaps 15 years or so. Um, but back in the day, back in the late 70s when I was young and um, the 80s, and then I started collecting these in the 90s, I was a huge, huge fan of Pocketeers, which uh, were released in Britain by Palatoy. And uh, this is, I believe, the full set of all the UK polity pocketeers. Um, and also some of the spin-offs, which I found later, these Tomy pocket games, which were the like the US ones, which came out in Britain a little bit later. And then even the pocket arcades, which was another spin-off again. So um, I shall go through these box by box. I literally haven't cast eyes on these in 15 years, so it should be quite a trip through memory lane, and I hope it is uh, enjoyable for you to watch. Okay, so I'm going to get the camera in a good position, and we'll start on that first box now. Okay then, so here we are. This is the first uh, box of what I believe to be the earliest uh, British Pocketeers. So what we're going to do, we're going to get this, uh, uh, get these all out and unpacked, and then we'll have a little look through. And we'll uh, we'll see any of the favourite games. Um, I can't quite remember how many they actually did now, but it was quite a lot over the years. Um, certainly, I had fun finding a lot of these. Um, I remember, I believe the first one I had was an absolute classic as a kid, which was um, Steeplechase. That was my all-time favourite. But I had some other ones as well. Um, Ratatat, I remember having um, <laughs> this one here, Roll Up. That was always a good one. I think that's got four games on it. Um, Tremor, yeah, oh, yes. <laughs> the nostalgia is already coming back. Uh, <laughs> um, so, yes, I'm, ah, there's the one I remember as uh, my all time favourite, Steeplechase. That was just the business, that one. That was brilliant. So that was that was great. We'll have a look at that one in a minute. Um, of course, these were all pre Game Boy days um, when if you wanted something handheld to play with, no mobile phones, no Game Boys. It was it was these. This is even before the days of the early Nintendo Game and Watches. And um, these were well, dexterity puzzles, and they've been around since the early uh, 20th century. Um, I used to have some uh, World War One uh, ball bearing puzzles, um, and there was a company called Jurnet in the UK, and they um, they produced uh, lots of uh, dexterity puzzles. And these are really just a modern version of that, but instead of being made out of plastic and cardboard, uh, sorry, a wooden and cardboard, these are these are plastic uh, games. Um, and uh, oh yeah, lots of memories coming back here. I remember, oh, I remember that was a tough one to get blowpipe. Um, that took quite a while to get, and also this one I seem to recall. Yeah, crossbow. That was another one. Lots of different bits to it, and um, these only came out in the initial batch, um, and then I believe they were withdrawn because they had pieces that um, uh, would, you know, kids could get uh, choked in their mouths and stuff. A bit like the the infamous rocket firing Boba Fett in Star Wars uh, where uh, they released a version of Boba Fett or they were going to release a version but it had um, a missile on, the, on his back and they couldn't obviously do that because children would choke on it so yeah this box does, does, box does appear to be all um, all the UK pocketeers so that's good fun so I shall just pause the video there now that we've emptied that first box and we'll uh, I'll sort some of these out and uh, we'll have a bit more detailed look at these okay so here we are we've got uh, all the uh, all the games unpacked now and i just wanted to zip through what i believe to be the full set of the pocketeers uh, in one form one or another um this is uh, one of the smurf ones um, they did three of these uh, i believe in the distinctive blue boxes so i'm not a massive fan of the smurfs i remember when they came out um, and you could get them through the the national garage um, in the uk not bad but certainly not my uh, not my favorite uh, Pocketeers. Uh, we got basketball there, and I believe there's a couple called basketball. This one um, is a bit of a harder one to get hold of rather than the other one, but um, yeah, not, not bad. There's quite a few sport related ones, obviously, because uh, they're easily done. Bombard, this is like a tank game, you had to sh shoot down the targets, so that's Bombard. Uh, pinball, of course, pinball was still much more prevalent in 
uh, pubs and arcades than uh, at the time that these came out than they are today. So there was bound to be sort of a pinball. In actual fact, this is more like a bag of tail. There's no actual flippers or anything. Um, so, you know, Pocketeer is taking a bit of a license there. Um, fruit machine. This is probably one that a lot of people remember. Um, let's just, we just get this one out. Oh no, this one's, this is one of the very first ones. So they're not that easy to get out because you'll notice the, uh, the tops are sealed in. And this is, this is literally mint box. So I don't really want to get this one, um, opened. However, um, you would you know, scroll down on the side and hit a button and that would then stop it and you'd, uh, you know, potentially win. Uh, uh, well, you don't win anything physical, but you get points. So that's how uh, pinball worked. Um, similar mechanism for poker. So poker being um, how they can actually call that poker, I don't know. But, you know, like a lot of these pocketeers, you've got a mechanism, a button mechanism. As I said, these are not electronic. They're just... Um, uh, what's the word for them? Um, uh, I don't know. Uh, they're just uh, almost like an old-fashioned wind-up toy, but not quite. Um, this one's actually got a little bit of wear, so not me, mint that one. But um, the good news with Pocketeers is, I mean, I don't know about today because I don't really do boot sales anymore. However, um, back when I was collecting these, I used to find loads of them at boot sales. And, um, you know, it, it was fairly easy to get a collection together without spending a lot of money. Um, however, finding the mint box was another uh, question entirely, and I, I do believe I have got every one of these boxes now. They're not all mint by any means, but um, they're certainly good enough for me. You know, I'm not trying to have the, the world's best pocketeer collection or anything like that. These are just because I loved them so much as a kid. Um, none of the ones I had yet, I think I had as a kid. This is Grand Prix. There's a few little variations on this one. This is one of the ones which got a timer mechanism there. Um, quite well remembered. Um, now this one here, Rock and Roll. I do think I had this one when I was younger. Yeah, pretty sure I did. Um, yeah, just a simple ball, ball balancing one. That one. Uh, rebound. Yeah, never ever had this one. Don't even remember it coming out. But uh, one of those ones I got. I do seem to remember as. Um, the games got harder and harder. There were a couple of websites which had all the Pocketeers listed, or at least a checklist of sorts. And that was what I used to go by to try and see which ones I needed. And obviously I kept a very sharp eye on eBay. Um, and um, yeah, I seem to have got them. There's lots of variations of these. I remember there was some in, um, in uh, there's like Chinese versions, this is one I really loved. There's some in, in Chinese, there's uh, Chinese versions and there's um, obviously the American Tomy games. So this is when you had to sort of use the dial to get the ball uh, around the maze. As I recall, uh, the ball actually seems to be completely stuck in there. So there we are, yeah, you get the idea. Yeah, just a little labyrinth and puzzle. Not bad. I, do. I seem to remember having that one as a kid. Um, but yeah, so as things got... Um, oh, this was another classic. As things got... Um, I was struggling to get the... Uh, struggling to find really nice ones. And I rarely you would find box ones at boot sales. Um, <laughs> that was um, I'd have to resort to eBay. Good old eBay. And um, that was where, if you were patient enough, box ones would eventually... Turn up, and I guess that's still the case today. Um, I remember lots of people had this one at school. This is rally. This is one where um, you've got a little magnet underneath, and you drive your car around the city. And that, was, uh, that was epic fun. That one. That was brilliant. Uh, golf. Oh, this was this was a really good one because um, you basically you could assemble your own golf course. Uh, there's lots of different pieces in it. It's one of these ones that bop, you open. If you see there, you actually have three pieces that you put into it, and with a with a, a guy that holds a club and you're actually, <laughs> you can actually play a couple of holes of golf uh, in the property. I, I love the more extravagant ones and that was definitely brilliant. Uh, what else have we got here? Another one of the football ones, cup final, just a fairly straightforward one. Not my favorite, but you know, it's football, isn't it? Uh, Vampire, this is one of the later games. This is really, I remember this being hard to track down at the time. Um, yeah, not a particularly good game, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, now, yeah, these were the two that were the, um, these are perhaps the, the two hardest to get of all. Um, 
crossbow and blowpipe. Now the reason why is because these um, uh, crossbow, you, you know, you literally have a blowpipe, uh, a blowpipe rather, and you you literally put balls in it and fire them at someone. Crossbow is a similar thing. You've got target and you've got a bow and arrow. Um, so I believe, similar to the Boba Fett situation I was talking about earlier, um, you just um, it was probably too dangerous. And I believe these only came out in that first wave um, back in 75, 76, and that was it. I don't believe they got uh, re-released. So yeah, those two. If you ever find those complete they're they're worth grabbing because they're rare they're they're probably the pocketier rarity in england anyway um about halfway now cat and mouse this is like a a uh, just a, a platformer in effect a remarkable similarity to super mario brothers and donkey kong um obviously i said this was around the time of the arcade so uh, Palatoy came up with uh, Space Invaders, if you can even call it that, but you've got the three guys, the three lines there uh, going across the screen in a timer, similar to um, the Space Invaders with um, uh, an enemy at the top, I seem to recall. Yeah, that was the, the little like, spaceship at the top that you had to hit through the, uh, get your ball in between and hit it. Uh, so, yeah, not particularly great artwork on that. The artwork on these, it's variations on a theme, so you've got like the uh, the racing driver there, uh, this one's got like a, a gambler, sort of a Texan cowboy. Um, yeah, they're really good, it's good that they kept the same artist, I actually don't know who the artist is, but he does look a bit like, um, he does look similar, I'm not saying it's um, Quentin Blake, but it's a similar sort of style. Um, maybe Dickie Howitt, maybe someone in the comments could tell me, because I would love to know who that actual original artist was who did all these. Um, so yeah, this is a cricket related one, big hit. This one I remember took me a little bit of time to get hold of, um, a cricket one. Yeah, that was quite good. Um, roll up, this is just a, a throwback to the old traditional balancing puzzles. This has got two on this side and I believe, yeah, two on the other side. This one's quite good. It's still got the um, the uh, sticker on for the shop. West Toys in Tunbridge. There you go. I wonder if they're still there. Probably not. Probably not. Okay. Time Machine. Yeah. Not not a great one. Uh, Monkey Puzzle. That was all right. You know, similar thing. Um, basically, with Pocket Ears, you, uh, you had basically the dexterity ones, or you had um, a timing mechanism, um, or you had the ones like this. And there was only about five or six different sorts of game. And then it was all variations on a theme. This was another football one, but it was a two-player, so that was actually pretty good, big match. Um, and uh, also came out, you see, almost identical, World Cup. Probably a re-release uh, for the year of the World Cup, uh, which would have been, I guess, the 78 World Cup, which is, which one was that, Mexico? I forget now. Uh, Drop and Catch, which is a bit, that was actually pretty good. I seem to remember that was a pretty good one. Um, oh, this is a variation on uh, the one we just showed, um, which is the, uh, this is like a Spanish version, I believe. Top Toys was Spanish, um, and they, like with Star Wars toys, uh, they re they distributed their own version of Palatoy toys in in uh, Spain. Although, yeah, it says um, in Argentina, so who knows? But I'm pretty sure it was uh, a Spanish one, that, Top Toys. Derby Day, uh, horse racing. I doubt this would be encouraged in today's uh, politically correct world, uh, encouraging children to gamble on the horses, but there you go. There's a, ho a horse racing one, uh, which is pretty elaborate. Pretty good, that one. Um, uh, now, this is uh, Smurfs. So this is another one which uses the same principle as Fruit Machine, where you've got different variations, and you've got a boy or a girl Smurf, and you put different heads on them. So that's uh, Smurf alike. Uh, almost there. Uh, splashdown. This this was a bit of a classic. I'd say this what this was one of the all-time classic splashdown. Um, and you had to fire your your ball up there, and there was a magnet at the top, and you try and sort of get your ball as quickly as as long as possible into the air, um, into the sea. So that was pretty good. Obviously, there was a big boom. The the space shuttle was launching. Um, Star Wars, you know, Star Trek. Everything was big. Space was big. Space Invaders. Splashdown. It just ties into that. Uh, flick and Spin, that was um, uh, one of the ones that came over from Japan, um, one of their popular games. I hate it. Awful, that one. Uh, this is the other version of basketball, which is like a two-player one. So you, you bang your, your ball across to try and beat the player and you can try and block him. Not bad, not bad, that one. Uh, Pitfall, yeah, another one. And uh, oh, Ratatat, so 
which is one I had as a child. I remember getting this one um, in Plymouth, which is where I'm from. There was a shop called Youngsters, and they had a big rack of um, they had a big rack of puppeteers. And I think, as I recall, you would put your balls in there like that, and you'd use this one to load up your gun. It's a bit hard when I'm trying to watch it. <laughs> and then um, fire your guns like that, and the um, the hideout would be along there, and you'd have to get the gangsters back into their hide back, uh, their hideout, and it would have moved move them along. Absolutely classic game now. Yeah, Ratatouille. Yeah, I wonder who else remembers We're that. We're almost there now. So this is um, Angler, which is like a fishing, fishing related one. It's not bad. Um, uh, not my my favourite, but not bad at all. Uh, Gobble, which is one where you uh, have to roll balls around um, and get them into this creature's mouth at the end. So that's that one. Um, letterbox. I remember this being fairly common. Um, you, had to, you had a timing mechanism. You had to get the, all the letters into into the uh, into their slots before the time ran out, so that was that was quite good fun. Um, the final of the three Smurf games, Smurf Ball. There's that one there, and then that was with uh, Derby, another horse racing one where I guess it's encouraging you to bet on the horses. <laughs> Once again, I don't know what pocketeers were up to at that time, but it makes you laugh for sure. Um, a pile up. Uh, this is a, this is pretty good. This one, um, you you used the clockwork mechanism, and that gave you time, and you had to guide your red car um, in between the black cars there. So it was an attempt at trying to get like a video racing game in in your hand. Um, then you had a casino. Now, this was a variation of poker. So once again, you pull the bits down, and you'd oh, once again a gambling thing. So I'm not sure what happened there. <laughs> And time up where this was a great one. You had to get your ball through the maze within a certain amount of time before that ran out. And then finally, my my all-time favourite, which is is steeplechase. So um, I believe this 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 warrants um, a much closer look at because it is such a great game. It's probably the one that um, most people remember. Um, so yeah, you start your little guy there, your your ball and round, uh, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, and I, <laughs> I remember now, the nostalgia's coming back. You had to get your ball into that boat and then move him onto there, move your ball around, and it would then go over the the, the bridge there, through there, around, 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 around. Um, ah, yeah, now you started over that side, so to get around like that. Yeah, ah, oh, what an absolute classic. And I believe that was actually pretty pretty difficult. Although once you'd mastered it enough, as as pocketeers go, this is this is the business. This is the absolute best. Look at that, 1978. Wow, I remember playing with this one so much as a kid. Uh, yes, nostalgia overload. Nostalgia overload. I hope. Uh, I wonder if uh, anybody watching this remembers playing with uh, Sequel Chase. What an absolute absolute classic anyway that's it for that box so i'm gonna um pause here and i'm gonna get the uh, the next load out okay, so this is box two now there's something quite interesting about this one and in fact the next one so these are predominantly uh in america pocketeers were released by tommy and they were called tommy pocket games and um this particular box um is an original uh case which the games came in now if you have a look at the address on the side there it says uh kaleidoscope Toys, and that's in Tavistock, which is quite near Plymouth. And um, I, uh, back in the uh, 80s and 90s, I was actively checking toy shops and bookshops and all the things, all the places where boot sales, where I would likely find this sort of stuff. And I was lucky enough to, um, I was speaking to the owner. And he said, oh, yeah, I, I was looking for pocketeers. He said, I've got something similar, because he did remember them. And it's Tommy Pocket Games. Now these... These ones here are British releases of American pocket games. Um, they this is because you know Palatoy in Colville, they went down, uh, they went bust, and um, I guess these were cheap little plastic games that they could import. As you can see, it's like European languages on the back, um, and they're not generally around. They're distributed by Tommy UK. There we are. So they obviously took over the distribution from Palatoy when they went bust. So I've got quite a lot of these. I don't, in fact, I know, I know for sure I haven't got them all because there was quite a lot of them. And one of them I gave to another collector, an avid collector of um, 
of Tommy Pocket Games and he literally begged me for it. So I said, mate, you've got it, it's yours. And that was a golf one. But the reason I like these is because these are American versions of Pocketeers or the Tommy Pocket Games. Um, uh, and a lot of these I haven't got. I used to, I used to find, I've got some of these I've got loose and I used to find those boot sales loose. But I believe I've pretty much got most of them, bar maybe one or two, as carded that actually came out on these pocket game cards, which are pretty scary. There's one golf one, but there is another one, I believe, which is which is the one I haven't got. Um, and then what else is in here? Uh, okay, this is it. This is see, I don't know what's actually in it. So this was a US carded one for Pac-Man. So we'll have a look at that in a minute. Um, oh, more, yeah. See, I haven't looked at these. Literally, I do not know what I'm going to find. <laughs> So it's pretty, pretty cool. Uh, I think I've had so many loose ones as well. One of the pocket games. Um, well, okay, so quite a lot here to go through. Um, what I think is probably best is I will finish taking these out because there is loads of them. Blimmin' heck. I had no, I had no idea I had so many. So let's get these all out of the box so we can have a better look at them all because a lot of these are variations on that same theme. As I said, there's just a few different sorts of pocketeers and they just vary in the theme. Um, so some of these you will recognize uh, from uh, the UK pocketeers and uh, it may inspire you to, to look on various overseas eBay sites to see, uh, to see what you might find, all right? So, oh look, there's another Pocketeer, but, it, but is it really a Pocketeer? We'll have to look in a minute. There we are, that's the last, uh, last couple. And look at that, look, at the bottom of the box, there's even a couple of the, the peg hangers. <laughs> so, let's have a look through this box now. Okay, so, I was quite surprised at how many of these I had, but, so this is an American one. Uh, obviously, Pac-Man, it was all the rage back in the day. Uh, this is a US one carded still. And this, uh, when did this one come out? 1982. There we are. So that's quite fun. Um, now this one here, this next one is, um, this is a knockoff. This isn't actually a Pocketeer at all. They've pinched the logo, but this is not look, distributed in the UK by Interact in Scunthorpe. That's not a Pocketeer. So it's a ball bearing puzzle. It's massive. That's not a Pocketeer. Not a Pocketeer in our eyes. It's, Cheap tat, how dare they, infiltrators, you know. Um, so these next ones then, these are the US ones, so I was telling you about. So these are the the pocket games. So these are proper Tomy ones, and they are, these have come from the States. Let's give, that's probably a better angle, isn't it? Um, these are US games that have been packaged in Britain for the European market, so Tomy pocket games. And as I said, I think I've pretty much got them all, but this was a great way to get all these um, all these US games um, in really nice condition because I used to find these at boot sales and I wondered where where they were all coming from and then I realized that they'd just been released in Britain anyway so uh, basketball this is a uh, home run I mean why would you release a baseball game in the UK that is uh, you know it makes you think doesn't it um, catch a calendar uh, caterpillar that's similar to uh, uh, splashdown so all of these you've seen the basic principle before in the british games and um, sorry about the light reflecting off these but um i'll do my best secret passage it's a labyrinth game um oh what was that one called again oh that's it wheel of fortune yep um dragon trap that's another variation of one of the british ones uh, target range i think collectors get excited when they see like a unique design um Touchdown, once again, American football. A bit weird for the British market. I used to find this one all the time, Robot Factory, and it is really good. Interestingly, I know this was pristine when it went away, and the bubbles have yellowed, that it's like started to age. And this has not been on display, it's not been in any sort of light. It just, it's a bit like the carded figures when the bubbles start to, um, to age. Uh, it's one of those things. Time is what causes that. Pass the buck, once again, American hockey. So, you know, you've got to wonder how many of these ever sold in Britain. They're hardly uh, our thing. Copter fire, same principle as Ratatat that we looked at earlier. But, you know, you can see it's exactly the same, but a variation on a theme. Uh, motocross, that was another quite good one. 
And then um, uh, shooting gallery, which is another one I used to find quite often. So that's those. As I said, almost all of those came from one shop in Tavistock, so I do count myself quite lucky that I got those. Uh, this is one, I think I've got some more of these later to have a look at, but this is Knight's Mission. This is one of those pocket arcades. Now, I know these do have their fans, uh, people like them. Uh, I think I bought a whole case of these at one point, so I've probably got these other ones on the back and maybe some variations of it, but we've got one more box to go through, and I think they're in there. So that's the pocket games. And then what else have we got? So, put a few overseas ones here. So this is um, F1 Racing. Now that, it says Tomy on it, but I don't believe it's, see there's a few there like Obstacle Course, that's probably Steeplechase Selection. Yeah, these probably were um, a Pocketeer style, but Pocket Mates, and I don't know which country these were in. Uh, these were released in but certainly a curiosity now these are just um ones from america this is predominantly how the tommy pocket game got released in the states um in these blue boxes and these are the ones that you can find quite quite regularly um once again a few little variations so there was always good fun all right so there's us ones there now these are us Tommy Pocket games that I don't believe I've got carded in any other way. So these are just ones which um, it's better having them loose than having not having them at all. There's another Pac-Man, sort of a carded version of that one. So even though these aren't boxed, it doesn't bother me because I just like to have them. That's another weird one. Isn't it? That looks like it could be Spanish or Italian. It's the, the letter one again. I do love finding variations like that. Clown Catcher. Um, flip-flop faces, a bit like Robot Factory we saw just now. That's quite a nice one. That's like, uh, uh, how do we play that one again? Rack em up, that's it, I remember now, yeah, rack em up. Um, oh yeah, that's, I think I do have that one boxed as well. There's another version of it. Um, Space Invasion, it's the US version of Space Invaders. So the tiny pocket game version. Uh, Cap Final, not Cup Final, so that's probably another European one of some sort. Um, got UK writing on the back there, so who can tell? And then <laughs> then another one, which is a Kissing Game, which is another variation of uh, Smurf Lookalike and the Fruit Machine. You just uh, put the different faces on. Now we're almost there on this box. Just these last ones here, which are, these are bootlegs. These aren't Pocketeers at all, but they're still in my collection. So we've got like a, a Mini Mate and a, a Pocket Game. And these ones here, which are quite nice, those. Um, these two here, ice hockey and, and golf, which are like um, slightly bigger than the traditional pocketeers. Anyway, that's the second box of three. So I've got one more little box to go through, uh, which is the Starcades or pocket arcades. So we'll have a look at those and then we'll be done. Okay, here we go. So this is the last box of the three that I brought down out of the loft today. Now, um, so you have no idea, a vague idea of what's in here. It's certainly not pocketeers, but one of their cousins. So. What's that? It's a Turtles game. Oh, similar to the wind-up uh, Tony Pockets. What's this? Ah, yeah. See, I thought I did have these three boxes. So this is um, Desert Race. Yeah. And what's that one? Copter Combat. Copter Combat. Lovely. And another loose one here. Which was this one? Um, Sky Catch. Yeah. Ah, yeah, I remember these now, yeah. Um, I don't know whether to even class these as like Pocketeers. They are very distant cousins, but uh, Tommy Starcade. So I'll get all these out. I think there's six of them. We'll get these out and we'll uh, we'll have a look at them just to finish off the collection. And then we'll do a little summary. Okay, so I shall be back in just a moment. Okay, so these are the Tommy... Uh, Pocket Arcade games. Now these were much, much bigger than Pocketeers. So I've just got five, which is the Sky Catch version. Uh, Turtles. And then what do we have there? It's a Copter Combat, Desert Race, and Knight's Mission. And these are actually really nice because they're boxed. I wonder if they're, um, these are dated. Let's have a look here. 
Yeah, I can't actually see. I can't actually see a date on these. Um, no, no date, no date. But suffice to say, I believe they were mid to late eighties, probably up until about eighty-eight, something like that. So you know, they're part of the collection. They're not the same nostalgic vein as Pocketeers, but I got them at the same time, so uh, I have to keep them with the collection. And very much so with these. Now these, I believe, were much. These star case were designed for youngsters, um, ages ages five and up. So certainly not not uh, complicated by any means. Now when did these ones come out? See, once again, they're not dated. Who oh, are they? Who oh, are they? Oh, look. 83 there. 18th of the 2nd, 1983. So maybe these are back to the 80s. So they're in very, very, very nice shape for that age. And I've got six of them, which I believe was the full set when I picked these up from that shop in Tavistock. And uh, what have we got here? And it's you know it's just basically it's the one one function so pretty pretty straightforward these um, uh, typical Tomy style. So look at this, look at them all. <laughs> I didn't had no idea I had so many. So I hope you've uh, hope you've enjoyed uh, watching this video and a trip down Tomy Pocketeers and Tomy Pocket Games uh, memory lane. Um, do uh, do leave me a like. I'd love to know if you had these as a kid and uh, leave me some comments. And um, most of all, if you could subscribe because I've got loads more, lo literally hundreds of boxes in my loft full of old toys and books and games, figures, uh, comics, you, you name it. There, there's so much to go through and I would really love to uh, share some more with you. So give us some encouragement, subscribe to the channel and um, I shall be seeing you soon. Thank you.